uh, in this lecture uh, we are going to talk about improper integrals of uh, type 2 so improper uh, integrals improper integrals type 2 so uh, so what are integral in, uh, uh, improper integrals of type 2 so uh, so the situation is like this so we can say uh, let's look at these two graphs so there's a graph like uh, let's say 1 over x uh, so this is at 1 so the function takes 1 so the problem is like uh, if you want to uh, find the area under the curve so this is y equal uh, 1 over x curve so what we try to do uh, we try to find the area uh, below the curve from 0 to 1 so uh, the corresponding integral would be uh, so it is uh, 0 to 1 1 over x dx but you can see that uh, now there's a problem um, so what's gonna happen uh, when you have 1 over x and you can see that when x reaches 0 at 0 the function is not defined so see at 0 function is not defined so you're gonna get a vertical asymptote so uh, of the curve you can see that uh, it's gonna go to infinity uh, when x reaches 0 so when x reaches 0 uh, you can see that the function goes to uh, infinity okay that's one situation let's also look at so the so the question is what is this area below the curve whether it's a finite number or not and also a situation like this uh, so it's a very similar curve uh, but uh, uh, at this time what's gonna happen uh, so uh, so it is like this little closer and then go like that so uh, <coughs> So you can see this is y equal uh, y equal 1 over square root x so I slightly change it so it is not 1 over x anymore it is 1 over square root x uh, and again we can ask the same question what is the area uh, below the curve uh, of this part uh, so that means the corresponding integral would be 0 to uh, 1 1 over square root x uh, dx and uh, so uh, so what's going to happen Actually, uh, for our surprise, uh, we can see that uh, this integral, uh, you're going to get a, a finite number and here uh, it is infinity. So, uh, so you can see that that's very strange. Uh, we slightly change the problem, but you're going to get completely different answers. So, uh, so what we're going to notice in this situation is uh, the function, so the function uh, becomes infinite function uh, becomes uh, infinite function become uh, infinite at uh, one of the endpoint at least at least okay uh, it can be a both but at least so function uh, becomes uh, infinite at the one of the endpoint that's, that's one of the observations that we have and then you can see that in these situations you're going to see uh, vertical asymptotes so there are uh, vertical asymptotes so there are uh, vertical vertical asymptotes uh, so there are uh, vertical asymptotes in these situations so there are vertical asymptotes um, so those are the kind of and then uh, so in this situation the uh, the result is not uh, obvious so uh, so the uh, so the area area can be uh, finite or uh, infinite or finite so it's not obvious uh, situation so there are so anything can happen it can be finite or infinite so, uh, so what we do next is we like, like try to look at the corresponding definition, and from the definition, then uh, we can do like some problems. Here. So let's look at the definition. <coughs> so as before, we can have uh, we have three uh, uh, cases. So the definition, definition, the first one. Let's say if uh, the function f(x) is continuous, continuous on the interval. A to B so at A it is open B close and discontinuous and discontinuous 
and discontinuous discontinuous uh, discontinuous at a discontinuous at a so the function is continuous from 0 to a but it is discontinuous at the point uh, a so so like that so it is discontinuous it's continuous from a to b but it discontinuous at uh, point a so that's the situation then what we can do when we write the integral like this then you write the definition then uh, so, uh, w the meaning of a to b is what uh, so meaning of a to b a to b fx dx is simply so you can take the limit what we gonna do we're gonna pick a point in the uh, inside the interval so I'm gonna call it C and then what we do we're gonna send C to A from right that's how we do so we pick a C uh, inside and then uh, we're gonna send uh, C to A uh, plus so we're gonna integrate from C to uh, B in this case and then we have fx uh, dx so that's what we have so what we can do so we, we pick a c and then uh, we integrate from c to b and then we send c to a from right so that's the first case so let's look at the second case so the second situation so it's very similar uh, so we have if uh, fx is continuous on a to b and discontinuous and discontinuous uh, at a b now the yeah, upper limit then what we can do uh, it's a, again a similar situation so we have uh, so this a to b open now a to b so now what we can do uh, as before uh, we're gonna pick a c so we're gonna uh, pick a c that's a c and then uh, what we do we're gonna send uh, c to b from left we're gonna send c to b from left so it is a to b uh, fx dx is limit what we can do we're gonna pick a c but c you send to b from left so it is uh, now a to uh, c a to c fx dx so that's the second case so you can see that in the first one you have a uh, discontinuity at a in the second one you have a discontinuity at b now the third case this is discontinuity in the middle of the integral somewhere okay so inside the integral so uh, inside the interval so if we can say fx is discontinuous Okay, discontinuous at C and uh, C is in between A and B it's not equal to any of them but it's in between then what's gonna happen uh, what we gonna do we gonna uh, split the integral uh, from so we have A B so there's a C somewhere but we're gonna we can split the integral from A to C and C to B and then those two integrals become uh, either case 1 or case 2 so uh, we're gonna go back to those cases and solve so what we do in this case we can split the integral uh, so we have a to b fx uh, dx now there is a discontinuity in the middle of the integral what we do we're gonna split the integral from a to c uh, fx dx plus and then c to uh, b fx dx c to b uh, fx dx and you can see that in this situation uh, so the first one is there's a discontinuity at the upper corner that's the second case and here there's a discontinuity in the, in the in the lower limit so that's the first case so what we do we're gonna solve those two separately if at least one of them is infinite we're gonna say uh, it is discontinuous if both are finite we're gonna say it is uh, uh, it's a, uh, in, in uh, integral converge so converge and diverge if at least one of them is infinite we say the whole integral diverge if both are finite then we're gonna say uh, the whole integral is uh, uh, converge so um, 
so we can say if the limits if the limit uh, if the limit exists if the limit exists if the limit exists uh, we say we say integral converge integral converges integral converges otherwise diverges otherwise uh, diverge so what we say if the limit exists it's a limit if the limit exists we say the integral converge if the limit does not exist we say uh, it's diverge uh, and then what's going to happen in the last case if at least uh, one of the if at least one of the integral integral diverges diverges uh, we say the integral diverges in uh, part uh, 3 okay so the past 3 is different so there are two integrals we can check whether at least one of them is uh, diverge so if at least one of them diverge we say the whole integral diverge so now what we need to do is let's look at several examples and see uh, how uh, uh, it's gonna go so the first example uh, so uh, test uh, whether the integral uh, 0 to 1 1 over square root x dx converge or diverge okay. converge or diverge so we can check this converge or diverge so what we can do again as before there are three steps here uh, we can apply the limit definition integrate find the limit so let's go in that direction so the answer so we have uh, the integral this is 0 to 1 1 over square root x dx so what we're gonna do we're gonna write the limit definition as step 1 limit definition so it's a limit so what we have here we have uh, we have open at 0 close at 1 why open at 0 because at 0 it does not exist so uh, so we're gonna pick a C here and then we send that to 0 from right so 0 plus so it's a limit C goes to 0 plus uh, C to 1 1 over square root x dx so that's what happened that's the uh, limit definition uh, now you can see that uh, so why we do that uh, so uh, why we do that you can see uh, so there is a this uh, there is a discontinuity there is a discontinuity there is a discontinuity at x equal 0 that's why we're gonna do at the lower limit so we always do that uh, at the place where there's a discontinuity okay so and then uh, what's gonna happen so we can finish it so it's a limit uh, c goes to 0 plus we can integrate this one this is a very easy integral uh, so we can do c, uh, c to 1 this is x to the uh, negative 1 half dx and then you can finish the uh, integral so it is c goes to 0 plus so you're going to get x uh, 1 half divided by 1 half and then you're going to iterate at 1 and c uh, so you're going to get limit uh, c goes to 0 plus 2 uh, square root x uh, 1 and i'm just writing xi steps here uh, so uh, and then limit c goes to 0 plus so that's step 2 so we're integrating it uh, so let's plug in the value so you're going to plug in the value so when you plug in the value you're going to get 2 when you plug in 1 and minus 2 square root c uh, now what we're going to do is find the uh, limit when c goes to 0 when c goes to 0 uh, you know that uh, uh, this term goes to uh, 0 so that means uh, your answer becomes uh, 2 
Nazar becomes 2, but we know that this is a finite number. It's less, so that's how we write it, finite. Uh, so it is a finite, finite. So we can say so uh, the integral uh, 0 to 1, 1 over square root x dx uh, converges converges so that is the kind of uh, situation and you can see that it's not that that difficult you just need to follow the uh, steps so this is the actually third step where you find 